All right, today I am going to draw for you this cute little raccoon and I'm going to show you how you can draw an underdrawing without an eraser and then add the dark bits on top of your underdrawing. So if you think of this like a skeleton drawing, all you need is a pencil and you will have little sketchy bits inside your drawing that you aren't going to need to keep or they might be mistakes. It doesn't matter, even if you don't have an eraser, we're just going to sketch this raccoon by looking at the main shapes that we can see in the picture. We see kind of like a half circle, kind of a straight line. We have shapes overlapping other shapes and we're just going to carve it up and let our drawing evolve. So you can see on here, I've pretty much got this worked out. You can't really see where the face ends and how the hands overlap the face, but it doesn't have to be exactly, as long as you're looking at a picture to help you find the shapes and angles, you'll end up with a really cool drawing. So I'm going to put my little practice one over here and I'm going to get a new paper and I'm going to show you how I find the main shapes and build the skeleton drawing now. If you'd like to join me, that is absolutely cool. If you'd like to just watch along and then do a raccoon drawing after, you can print out the little raccoon that I have at the bottom of this video. Right. So looking on here, we want to make sure that this fits here. So if I see this little archy shape, I can draw with my finger, make sure it's going to fit, room for the nose and then room for two hands. See how the hands poke out a little bit past the head and the ears do as well. So I'm going to make sure that my little arch is not all the way to the edge. So I'm going to leave a little gap, all right? So hopefully you can see my little soft drawing. I'm going to draw really softly so I can change it easily. But if I press a little harder, it's easier for the lines to show up in the camera. But for you, I would draw so soft because remember, we don't have to use an eraser. So I can see this little humpy shape and I see a straight line across. Sometimes I use my pencil to help me so I can draw a straight line across at the bottom and I know that this is a symmetrical drawing, so it's the same on both sides. So I'm going to pop a little line down the middle that will help me plan out my drawing as I go along. So now I've got this straight line, but I can see there's another shape that's hanging down below the straight line and it's also going above. So I'll draw this white shape. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. Does that look perfect? No, it's a bit shorter on this side and it's longer on this side. So I'm going to try to keep sketching so that I've got it about right. I think that's about the same on both sides. And it's kind of like the space between here and here is about the same as here and here. So it looks like I've got roughly the same size. Now I can see at the bottom of this little muzzle snouty area I've got a little nose just sitting at the bottom here and there's still a little bit of white bit showing under put some nostrils there and then up above that I've got a rectangle going right down the middle if you put your eyes on now you might need that rectangle so I wouldn't put the eyes on straight away unless you're really looking what's at the edge of this shape here that's where the eyes are. They don't go past here. So first I'll put this little rectangle on. Looks like it goes in a little bit here. And then let's just draw it straight up. And it's not going up to the forehead. It's not going all the way. Oh, by the way, this looks a little bit more straight. I'm going to make that straighter. So I'll leave a little space here where it turns from dark fur, joins into dark fur at the top. And we've got this white bit and we've got a dark bit and we've got an eyeball. So can you see how the white goes along here, joins up from this furry bit and there's a white bit that goes up and around the eyes. Then we can attach our little eyeballs. 
the eyeballs are not sitting down here. See, they're not sitting down on this little snout or muzzle bit. They are a little bit up, so, and it's touching, almost touching the white bit. So let's pop on a little circle and see what we think. Is that good? Are they the same? No, this one's closer to the line. This one's gotta be closer to the line. And this one's gotta be bigger. So I'm not using an eraser, but I'm just making it bigger. Just carving it up. Ta-da! So let's check. Pencil shows that the eyes are about in line with this bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, that's pretty close. It's just my underdrawing white, so I'm going okay. Can you see how this white bit goes up and comes back down and joins in somehow? I'm not going to do this very dark because I'm going to end up turning it into hairs. The white bit comes down and we've got a black patch that goes along there, comes down pretty much, yeah, comes down to here. Okay, so that's going to be all dark and I'm going to turn that into fur soon. And then up here we've got these lovely little ears and they're not like this, are they? So don't draw them like that. There's an angle. So this is straight and this is straight. I'm not drawing like this. That would be too hard for me to look at the angles. Got to keep it straight. Okie dokie, is it straight? Yes. Angles, let's look. The angle of the top part of the ear is like this. I think that's, I'll sketch it on and see how it looks. Let's try to do this one. Yep, I think that's good. And it rounds back, rounds back again. Mm -hmm. That's good enough. Let's just say that this is like a little bit that comes down into the head so that we can add some fur, make it look like it's fur coming from inside the ear. And then this looks like it's a bit more of a V shape down here. So I'm going to carve, carve around the nose and make this more of a V shape. There we go. And then I see there's like a white line around these eyes. So I'm going to put another little circle inside that one. Hopefully that will work. And we've got a little white patch. So all this I'm going to color in dark soon. But first I just want to get on these cute little hands. Hmm. So if we're looking at shapes. What shape do you see on these hands? Could be an oval or it could be like um, a triangle. So, but where are they? They are, the main um, pad of the hand is kind of inside, closer to the, just under the cheeks. So I'll put these little ovals on. It's not touching the mouth. It's just hanging down a little there. So those are like the pads of the hands. And I notice they're a little bit fatter at the top and they get a little bit, thinner at the bottom, kind of like a little triangle. And then they've got five little fingers. So the thumb is a little bit shorter. And then we have a long finger, a long finger, a long finger, and a small one. Let's try that again. So this is my underdrawing. Remember, it's not perfect. It's just the start. So I can change it. I can carve it up and it will evolve into a really cool drawing. I could draw this bit on, but I think I'll leave it off now, see how it works out. Can you see all these whiskers? They're overlapping as well. I might just put those on at the end, or should I? They're white, how am I gonna put white on top? I might have to make them pencil colored. We shall see. So if I put my pencil down, I don't have to do any more on this drawing with my pencil. I can use black to get the black bits. I've got a black colored pencil. I've got a black crayon. I've got another black colored pencil. And I have a bowl full of charcoal. So charcoal is like burnt sticks. I could use a vivid as well. I could use a pen. But I think this is awesome. It makes a nice dark color. And you can do light bits. That would be quite cool to have crayon. 
you can kind of do the same thing with the colored pencil. So I think most people have colored pencils at home, so I think I'll just go for the colored pencil, maybe try a bit of this as well, just to see what happens. So now that didn't take very long, right? This underdrawing looks a bit similar to this underdrawing. Skeleton drawing. Oh, this one has claws. I could pop in some little claws here. Pretty much little tiny like ovaly shapes at the end. Right? They're not perfectly perfect, but they're fine. Okay, this is bothering me here, how I see this line crossing over. Feel free to pause anytime if you want to just catch up. And if you're doing this with a friend or a parent, you might like to pause and then look at each other's and see if you missed anything. Did you get this white space? Did you get this dark space? It's hard to see. So let's kind of darken this up a little bit. We'll look for the dark areas first and then we'll look for like the medium sort of colors, the medium sort of shades. So this little furry patch going down his nose is a darkish color. So I'm doing little, little strokes like this to make it look like little hairs. And then I see the nose is a lot darker. So I'm going to just darken it. And somehow I'll leave these nostrils a little lighter so I can see them. So add your dark bits in, whether it's pen, vivid, color pencil, crayon, whatever it is you're adding in the black bits. Okay, now where's the other black bits? These hands are very black. So are these little eyeballs. Okay, I see the bottom of the eyeball is blacker than the top part. So I'm going to color this in dark and then press a little lighter and leave a little white patch that will look like a reflection. Keep on going around your circle till you're happy with the, the blending of it. Do the same over here. Oops, over here. Oh, it's darker. This one looks a little darker at the top. Leave that little white reflection-y bit. Oops, dark. I'm pressing quite hard to get this dark stuff. And I'll have to do a bit lighter just to try to mix it together so it looks like a nice rounded eyeball. And then we've got this little dark fur going around the edge of this but you know how when you have like the sun and you've got the rays of the sun going out like this that's like the face of an animal so when you have the fur on the face it's growing up and out so these little bits are going to all be going this way and these ones are all going to be going this way so some people like to turn their paper side around and and so that they can get these these um, directions of their coloring, but I just like to move my arm and, and my wrist to get things in the right spot. So I'm gonna make all these hairs go this way, but sometimes it's hard to fill these in with little marks like this. So I like to kind of do it in little zigzags. Just keep going over my zigzags and it makes it go real fast. As long as they're going in the right direction. See that? Does that look like fur? Yes. And I'll do the same on this side and I'll be careful not to color in that little white line going around. Now make sure they go like the sun going out this way and these ones going this way. I mean this is this is looking cool. So, when I was a little girl growing up in Canada, we sometimes saw raccoons. They would come out at night and they're snooping around to see what they can find. Never see them in the daytime. They're sneaky, very sneaky. Make this a little darker. Oh yeah, this is cool. Oh, add some more of these. You can make little short marks like this if you want. Now, else is dark where are the darkest bits these hands they are definitely as dark as the nose so they're almost like little um 
um, silhouettes. So I'm going to go around them. And did you see how I made these little fingers? Well, I'm going to fix them up a bit and make this into like a U shape at the bottom of each finger. So it looks more like these bits in your hands. Oh, that looks more realistic, doesn't it? And then I'll go over my little claws, color those in black. And then I can go around the hand and then color it in. Make them quite dark. Try not to go out of the lines. You can pause this and catch up or speed ahead of me if you like. I'm not going to color it in completely perfect because I, I don't want it to be perfectly black. But I'm going to put like a couple of little marks in the hand so it looks like kind of realistic. There. Now I'm going to do the same over here. How are you going with your hands? Don't worry if they're not, if you're like, oh no, I can't get them perfect. They're just shapes on top of shapes. Remember this was an oval. These are long little ovals. And now I'm going around to make them look more realistic by having these little humpy shapes. Not little humpy shapes, like little curved lines, like little U shapes. Do, do, do. There you go. Color that in. And again, it is not perfect. Who said it had to be like colored in perfect, like completely black like this? Nobody. Okay, that's cool. It looks like it's made by a human, not a machine. So that's good. Oh, I like this one's a bit more pointy at the bottom. And this one will make it a little bit more pointy as well. Yes, we don't need to see his arms because they're kind of like behind because he's got like bent elbows and um, <clears throat> that's good enough. I'm going to go in here and put some black bits just to show it's kind of going to sort of make these white bits look white. Do you see what I mean when I put a little bit of black, black bits there? And then these other white furs, if I leave them white but also have a little bit of black next to it like that, then we know those are meant to stay white. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then these are like a lighter gray mixing in the white and the gray mixing in going out here. Oh my gosh, he's looking cute. Now, these ones have to go up, growing out that way, just like a cat. So if you were petting your cat's face, you'd be going up and around and out to the sides. You wouldn't be coloring this way or petting this way, would you? These are angles that the hairs grow on the animal's face. Not too long. Think about it. Are the hairs the right length? Sometimes I'm going upwards, like sometimes I'm going downwards. What if I do some of these zigzags just to make it quicker? Yes, and keep going until you get the right tone. So here's really darker in the middle and here's a little bit darker. It's almost the same as this one, right? So I'll just go and inside the ears is also a little darker and a little lighter. So here's the light bits. I'm fast, right? So I love saving time. It's kind of like cheating, but it's not really cheating. It is just getting stuff done, trying stuff out but not being too precious about it, not taking all day and trying to be a perfectionist. So I'm learning some stuff by just trying out these shapes, getting the underdrawing right, and then having some fun with all this stuff. So I think this could be a little darker around here. What if I press a little lighter and do some of these little zigzags just to fill that in? Ooh, that's nicer. I'm going lightly like this. So like, it's like a softer gray. Okay, a bit more zigzaggy zigzags up here. 
Oh my gosh, I'm liking this. This is cute. I think this is wider here than this one. So, I don't know, I could just make these ears a little bit bigger and make them closer together. Would that work? Oh, I like them. I'll just make this a bit darker in here. Oh, yeah. He's cute. This could be a little darker as well. Little zigzags. So, if you think, I'm finished, you could hold it up and look at it. You might tilt it so it looks at you better. Because sometimes when it's flat on the table, your eyes see it differently. Um, if you want to darken up this bit, that'll make this bit look whiter. I might just go lightly and get that in there. Or I could try my charcoal. And just, oops. Get some black in here. And then I could smudge it with my finger because that's like further back, it's his body, and you don't see the details of that because his head is like, sort of like creating a little shadow so we can't see. Does that work okay? Yes! Oh yeah, I could put some of this charcoal up in here if I want, smudge it around. So if you have charcoal, oh, you're gonna have fun with that. If you don't, don't worry, I created a sort of like a charcoal look as well with Color pencil. Wow, there's the raccoon. What a difference from the underdrawing, which I didn't use an eraser on. See, I even have lines I don't want to keep. And this one still has a couple of lines in it if you look really closely, but it doesn't matter. As always, make sure you sign your artwork. If you want to put the little date on it, you can. Any scrappy bits that you would have practiced in your sketchbook, you could do them at the bottom or do them on the side. I was just doing this to show you. So yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, you won't have the printouts to go along with it. You can get the printouts inside my um, big art school or the animal, oh no, this isn't gonna be in the animal faces. This is gonna be in the big art school or the little art, mini art school. So all smiles, big art school or all smiles.